Welcome to lecture two of our five-part series on free will. In this lecture, we will consider two arguments for incompatibilism. If you recall, incompatibilism is the claim that determinism and free will uh, can't co coexist, that they're incompatible with each other. If determinism is true, there is no free will. On the other hand, if we have free will, then determinism is not true. Here we'll consider Peter Van Inwagen's The Consequence Argument. Uh, it's a very influential argument. Peter Van Inwagen is a very influential philosopher, metaphysician, and it's for the claim that free will and determinism are not compatible. Uh, let's be clear on that. It's not an argument for determinism. It's not an argument for free will. It's an argument that if determinism is true, then there is no free will. All right, here's a statement from his article, An Essay on Free Will. If determinism is true, then our acts are the consequence of laws of nature and events in the remote past. But it's not up to us what, what went on before we were born, and neither is it up to us what the laws of nature are. Therefore, the consequences of these things, including our present acts, are not up to us. So premise one seems pretty... Uh, non-controversial. No one has power over the facts of the past and the laws of nature. We'll call those F and L respectively. No one has power over the facts of the past. Can you change the fact that dinosaurs existed or that you were born on a certain day? No. Can you change the laws of na nature, the strength of gravity, uh, the setting of the cosmological constant? No. So um, premise one is pretty clearly true that you don't have power over these things. But if determinism is true, then given some past state of the universe and the laws of nature, the universe is going to roll out according to one specific way, right? So if determinism is true, premise two is true. If no one has power over the facts of the past and the laws of nature, then no one has power over the fact that F and L entail every fact of the future. So remember, we're, we're, premise two is not an argument for determinism. It's assuming determinism. Uh, so if, if no one has power over the facts of the past or the laws of nature, and determinism is true, um, then the universe is going to roll out according to one specific way, and no one has power over that. Um, therefore, no one has power over the facts of the future because the past determines the future and you don't have power over the past, so you don't have power over the future. However, free will requires that you have some relevant sense of power over the facts of the future. Okay, so the conclusion is that free will, uh, if determinism is true, then free will does not obtain. Let me just explain the argument to you, sort of in layman's terms. Can't change the past. If determinism is true, the past determines the future. And since you can't change the past, you can't change the future. Right? Um, free will requires that you do, that you're able to change the future. Therefore, determinism and free will are not compatible. So what do you think of this argument? Obviously, you can't respond through the video, but uh, I'd like to hear from you. I'd like to know what you think. And then there's the source argument for the claim that free will and determinism are not compatible. Again, this is not an argument for determinism. It is not an argument for free will. It's an argument that free will and determinism can't exist in the same universe. If, determin if determinism is true, we don't have free will. If we have free will, then determinism is not true. Premise one, we act freely only if we are the ultimate sources, the originators, the first causes of at least some of our choices. Two, if determinism is true, then everything we do is ultimately caused by events and circumstances outside of our control. Three, if everything we do is ultimately caused by events and circumstances outside of our control, 
and we are not the ultimate sources of any of our choices. Four, therefore, if determinism is true, we are not the ultimate sources of any of our choices. Five, therefore, if determinism is true, we never act freely. All right, so you can see how the thought progresses. Um, and, and, and this argument has two different conclusions, um, four following from one through three and five following from four. Okay. So number one says we act freely only if we are the ultimate sources of at least some of our choices, right? So we need to be the originator of our choice. It, it, our choice can't originate in some, you know, fact of the universe that occurred 2,000 years before we were born, 3,000 years before we were born, the age of the dinosaurs, whatever. Um, we act freely only if we can sort of initiate a course of events, initiate an action, that we are the prime cause or the primary cause, the first cause of our choices. You know, think of it this way, like much like God is the first cause of the universe. Through a free act of God's, he just decided to create. There was no factor outside of God that determined what he would do. He just did it. In the same way, on this view of freedom, we're only free if we can sort of, so to speak, just bring something about, you know, regardless of outside circumstances. It doesn't mean we're like free in the sense that we can do anything at all. Obviously, that's not true. We can't fly um we can't make ourselves into lizards whatever but it's free in the sense of you know suppose you have a choice between a ham sandwich and a peanut butter sandwich well if you're free in that action there's not going to be any sort of outside factor that would determine maybe maybe it like predisposes you but it doesn't determine you to choose one over the other you that's fully within your control so that you just completely um, start a new causal chain, a new course of events by your mere, mere willing that it would be the case. Right? So if determinism is true, then everything we do is caused by events and circumstances outside of our control. So we aren't the ultimate source of, sources of our actions. The ultimate source of our actions is something outside of us. You know, the far past, the distant past, the Big Bang, or, uh, you know, God's decree or something like that. So if everything we do is ultimately caused by events and circumstances outside of our control, then we are not the ultimate sources of our choices. So therefore, if determinism is true, we are not the ultimate source of, source of our sources of our choices. And therefore, if determinism is true, since in order to act freely, we must be the sources of our choices, then we never act freely. So what do you think of this argument? Uh, I'd like to hear from you. Okay, so those are two arguments for incompatibilism. Um, very influential arguments. And, um, you know, we'll move on now to Chisholm's, sorry, Chisholm's libertarianism.